What's going on everybody? Welcome back to our wife studio. Sam here as always and recently I've been wanting to get a new LinkedIn photo but I don't really want to go outside and get somebody to take it for me. So I was thinking with all this new crazy generative AI going on, can I just make my own? If you don't know what generative AI is, well, it's a great tool where you can basically use AI and you can edit videos just by selecting the areas that you want to change and typing in what you want it to be changed into. So I was thinking, let's do that, but we'll make a photo that I already have and we'll turn it into a nice LinkedIn photo. So this is what I have for you guys and let's hop straight into it. Now, the first thing you want to do is to choose a nice photo of you, a photo that you actually like. Um, it might not be super professional, but it needs to have that wow factor that you really like to want to actually put in your profile picture for LinkedIn or any other professional occasion. So once you find that photo, you're gonna take this photo straight into uh, Photoshop beta where it has the generative AI. All right, now once we are in here um, in Photoshop, this is the beta version. If you don't know how to do it, you have to go into the Adobe Creative Cloud um, and then you have to go into beta app. So if you don't know how to get the new Adobe, uh, make sure you're going into your apps. And then right here, you scroll down to where it says beta apps. And you can see all the different beta apps that Adobe is working on and you can go ahead and download Photoshop beta. Now you can do this online, but uh, if you wanna do this natively in the app, you're gonna need Creative Cloud. And if you guys wanna get the whole Adobe Suites, I have a link in the description where you can purchase Adobe Suites and if you're students, you basically get it for 60% off. So make sure you click that link in the description so you can try this out and you can help support the channel by doing that. Okay. So now that we have this open and it's in Photoshop with generative fill, we can go ahead and unlock this base photo. And the first thing we're going to do is just crop this, crop this to where you think, you know, you have a nice square crop with your face, probably in the middle. Uh, and then I'm going to rotate my specific picture so that my face looks right side up. You can see that I'm looking at the lines there so that it matches both my eyes, right? So that it's level, the head, and just move around until you get something that you're really happy with and hit enter. So this is kind of the orientation that I want, which is great. Now I'm going to use the object select button, which is right here. So if I click myself, it should be able to recognize that, Hey, there is a person in this photo and I'm going to go ahead and select that. So you can see that Photoshop has done a great job at actually selecting me out of this photo. All right, next we are going to go ahead and select the inverse. So right click, select inverse. Make sure you have one of the selection tools um, selected when you do that, or you can click control I to do the inverse. I'm gonna go ahead and add the quarters here because I see that these are not actually included um, as well as this guy right here. Okay, great. And what I'm going to do is click this generative fill option and then we're going to go ahead and type something professional. So either it could be a gradient uh, in a building or sorry, in a professional photo studio. What I find to be the best way to do this is if you type interior of building, interior of a building, uh, professional. And if you type bokeh, which is uh, blurring of the background in a camera, I feel like this gives kind of the best effect. So we'll see what it turns out for us right here. Okay, so it's given us three different backgrounds. Um, all of these are okay. If you want to generate another background, you can go ahead and click generate again. It'll give you the different variations on the right. As you can see here, I just scrolled through my variations, but you can basically continuously do this until you really find one that you think looks really good. So maybe it's, you know, one of these, I feel like the second one looks pretty good. looks like I'm in a professional building. Next, what we're going to do is select the clothing that we want to get rid of. And you know, we want to wear something a little bit more professional. So again, I'm going to go ahead and go in and select what I want to fill. So right here, I have the polygon lasso tool selected. You can use any of the selection tools as long as it works for you. 
and I'm just going in here and selecting my clothes and the side of my face all the way down to my neck and all the way up and make sure we're just getting the clothes out. Okay, great. So I like to give as much space for the generative fill to work as possible. So I'm going to give it the whole bottom portion and we're going to click generative fill one more time. And this time we're putting in professional attire. So let's see what happens if I just give it professional attire. I think it's going to just give me a suit, which is great. So let's see what happens. Okay. So again, it's given me a, a great suit. It looks pretty casual, which is great because I'm not really in a business background. So I don't really need anything super formal. And you can see I have different options here as well. Now I do really like number three a lot. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with number three. Okay, so this is already a lot better of a photo than what we started with, right? We started with something like this. You can see Jenner Phil has given us a really good professional photo. Now, what I like to do after is go in, go to the bottom here and actually adjust some of the things. So some of the things I like to adjust, uh, you guys can play around with uh, saturation. I like to turn down just a little bit. You can play around with the hues, but I like to leave this on just the normal. Now you can, you know, adjust the lightness, the brightness. You can also go in, adjust something like brightness and contrast. I like to turn it up just a little bit more. So you get more of that studio lighting effect, right? Um, and then the other thing, my secret weapon is you want to go in and you want to do color lookup and color lookup will always give you colors that kind of match each other. These are like presets and cameras um, that will really work together, especially the colors of the photos that appear or the, the colors that appear on this photo. So here you can see some of them are re working really well. All I'm doing is using the scroll wheel to go through these. Okay, I feel like this one might be one of the better ones, but obviously choose the one that works for you. And another thing that I like to do, especially if you're doing, you know, architecture, landscape architecture, black and white, it everybody does it. It looks great and just wow, just look at it. You can you know, adjust some of the things in the background if you want, you know, how bright or dark these things are. But generally you want you to pop. That's why we did the bouquet uh, background. But you can see this is already a really great professional photograph. So let me know when you guys try this method. Does it work? Does it actually, you know, give you a nice professional photo like what I've done here? Or, you know, where, where does it go wrong so that we can all work together as a community to try to figure out the best way to do this? But if you guys have learned anything new or thought this was pretty valuable, please don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers. We're so close. So help me out on that. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.